Hey, Diddler's watching house. Let's go. We're gonna gonna do house. Did you shut up? Did you, that's drunk Google. Google's not drunk. He's referred to my Google as a diddler. Google, you need to go home. I, I find it quite scary that your Google answered to me when I said diddler. Hey, diddler. <laughs> Play country roads. Shut up. Hey, Google. Stop. Hey, diddler. Play some copyrighted music. Getting a bit, it's getting a bit scared and confused. <laughs> Did you see the way the circle span around? It span around like six times. It it's like nervous. I was going. Uh, 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 uh. So <laughs> we've, we've been on recording for less than a minute, and you've already revealed my Google Home to be a diddler. I'm probably not going to have much to say about this film. I'll probably just be, in, I'll probably just be enjoying it. We will predominantly be sat, most likely, in a confused silence. I think, I think you'll find people like to hear ambient noise of traffic going past your house. Well, yeah, but for a, a comedy dining experience, authentic experience, 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 it um, requires a bit more of a quieter tone. A quieter tone. So we are going to be talking about the movie House, known as Hasu. Did you buy some mixed but raised buttons too? Yes. Oh, why did you copy me? Because I like the look of cut of your jib. Would you like your mixed race buttons? I'm okay for the time being, but thank you very kindly. Okay. We're going to be talking about the film House, also known as Hasu. Um, I believe it's 1970s psychedelic horror yeah. Japanese That's film. Like I said, I watched this once a long time ago with you, and I probably won't have much to say because I'll just be en- enjoying myself. Enjoying the visuals. While watching it. Yeah. So I recently upgraded to the Blu-ray, thought it'd be good to give it a spin. I haven't watched this film in ages, so I thought, well, you know, Grand Blu ray is a good chance to dig it out and watch it. And hopefully you'll join us. Was the last on... time you watched it probably that time that we watched it? Quite possibly, you know. Which was about four or five years ago. Something like that. Yeah. That's that could be it. it. I've known you for more than four or five years. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Where did the years go? We used to be handsome. They're over there. Thin. I keep them in a box. Magnificent. I never used to be thin. Those years are gone now. Oh, it's been a fight. And yeah, I used to be two stone. When anyway. You, when you were born, maybe. Well, yeah. No, not even then. Not even then. Says and, the guy who's chomping his face on mixed base buttons <laughs> and who's just had an enormous fucking pizza to himself. Y- yes. So the, I'm the one going, ha <laughs> fat jokes. So for this, we are continuing to drink Jack Daniels mm. and cider. Um, we have just eaten two massive pizzas. Ben had a Mighty Meaty and I have had a steak uh, and onion cheese pizza. Very nice. Uh, ben is now eating what he calls mixed race buttons. They're milk and white chocolate buttons. Because he believes in ebony and ivory. Because Cadbury's like together. to promote... Cadbury's are promoting a right idea. Living yeah. side by side in the form of chocolate. In harmony. Uh, I may partake of Paul those, McCartney ate these, you know. Really? When he was recording Ebony and Ivory with Stevie Wonder. He didn't separate the buttons out, because that would said, have sent the wrong message exactly. entirely. No, he didn't. He said, Hey, Stevie, right. Throw a, throw a bit of these, right? Mixed buttons are really good, right? And Stevie just smiled and slowly <laughs> took a handful, and then a tear rolled out from have behind tried, his glasses. Have you tried the chocolate flavour, Stevie? Right, okay, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's really good. Really <laughs> right. <laughs> Stevie Sorry, Wonder. Because and Stevie Wonder turned around and said, Boy, you sound a lot like Cliff Richard today, Paul McCartney. You ever had a milky bar? No, right. Good That's yeah, fair gear. So And I said, John, we should just we should just do it on the roof, right? Uh, okay, yeah. And, so, then, and then John said I don't think we should do it on the roof, I think that'd cause a lot and John, of problems. And, and then John John turned around and went, Yeah, fab, okay, yeah, cool. Said around, said around and went Shut up, Paul, you big hairy twat. Um, you don't know what you're on about, and I don't <laughs> approve of all that dirty, dirty language. I'm trying to shag Yoko in a, boot, in a big plastic bag, do you mind? That's an evening. <laughs> so, we're watching... And George Harrison said... <laughs> <laughs> he said, I don't know, you know, just trying to get more songs on the album. Ringo, at that point, was passed out over the drum kit. Anyway... Ringo was like, there was me, all the lads, and Thomas <laughs> came into the track, and he said, Oh, Thomas, said the fat controller. 
Have you seen Percy today? <laughs> <laughs> Why, no, I haven't, said Thomas. Thomas looked very upset as he wandered out of the station and towards the local knacker's yard. <laughs> Dan and Ben are engaging on a commentary. I might just film. talk like this for the rest of the film. That sounds pretty bloody impressive. <laughs> Dan and Ben are engaging on a commentary series for the 1970s film House, also known as Asu. How long is this film? 88 not, minutes not, long. Not that I'm waiting for it to be over. <laughs> I'm just curious. It's only just bloody begun. It hasn't begun. It's on a black screen. So we're queued up on a black screen and we're going to queue ourselves in. How and... nice. Right, does JD and chocolate taste together? Let's put I think it's there. one of the winning combinations. Try it yourself at home. And be sure to check out... Or or try, or alternatively, don't try it at home. Try it in the street where try you belong. In the park. <laughs> on the boat. Or in the car. <laughs> Don't try it in the car. Do try it in the car. So we're all queued up. We're on a black screen. I'll give you the cue points up on the screen right now. And without further ado, let mayhem commence as we count in. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> Ooh, a nice crisp. Nice crisp logo. Is this your first viewing of it on Blu-ray? I've never seen it on Blu-ray. I've had it on DVD for years. And I'm really looking forward to seeing the Blu-ray copy of this because I reckon it'll scrubbed up lovely. Well, probably, yeah. A movie. Nice. This will probably be one of our more subdued commentaries just to warn you all in advance why is that because i think a lot of it's just going to be a sort of sat reading the subtitles <laughs> and then looking at what's happening on screen and thinking what on earth is happening here well i'll be curious because i've like i said i've not seen this film in quite a few years so i'll probably be trying to i mean, i i know what happens a lot of stupid nonsense happens to this, but i think the aspect ratio is wrong what makes you say that it's currently showing on our screen in 4.3. Yeah. Maybe that's the way that it was intended to be. I have the DVD copy here as well. But the, what I'm saying is the DVD copy might be wrong. Yeah, you see, it says there that that's incorrect. So. House is presented in the 151-1 aspect ratio of Toho's restoration of the film. For widescreen systems, screen the anamorphic image of the film. Display mode should be toggled um, until the frame appears with its original dimensions intact. Pill pillar boxed black bars bordering the left and right of the image. So there should be black bars on the side. Right. Maybe not to that degree, though, because look. So it says incorrect. But that's correct. So there's still black bars on the screen. With slight, it says, film image as intended by the director when shown on a widescreen display with slight pillar boxing on the left and right. That's looking like it's going to be the best we're going to get. Well, I'm sure that Toho Pictures will forgive us. I mean, I mean the audience don't really care because they're not seeing this, but. I'm sure Toho Pictures will forgive us. I won't forgive myself, though, Ben. <laughs> and that's the important thing. I will be very upset. Very upset. I just forgot how overbearing the music is in this film. Yeah, I love that. Like, it's so loud. It's very <laughs> loud and it blots out all the dialogue, which makes the subtitles even more useful. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll just say about the music, it's like very, like, upfront, isn't it? Oh, yes. It's a very strange looking film. Woozy, almost. That's a good way to put it. How's the HD restoration looking to you so far? It's nice to see the grain. One of the things that the DVD version's missing is the picture grain. Yeah. It kind of takes a bit of the detail out. But this is looking nice. Very nice. 
It makes that feel like more like a set, doesn't it? Oh yeah, it's, it's clearly a backdrop. I mean, I suppose the Blu-ray copy is kind of bringing out the lighting a little bit more. It's making it look a little bit more stagey, mm. whereas on the DVD it looked a little bit more naturalistic. But then I suppose the idea is that it's supposed to give you that unsettling feeling of familiarity without familiarity, if you know what I mean. Kind of. I like the idea of it, it looking natural, but at the same time unnatural. <laughs> it's really hard to explain, but basically it's like... I get it. Yeah. It's also good to see that her father is embracing the station-to-station -station era, David Bowie. <laughs> I've always wanted to make a film like this. In... With this sort of, like, visual style, you mean? Yeah, you know, it's kind of... It's got that woozy, positive, positive vibe about it. Everything's really overly Sac emotive. Saccharin. Yeah. I did try in uni, but I never quite... I don't think I quite landed exactly what I was looking for. You're referring, of course, to... Yes, there was a short film that I made. Um, it was very hyper-colourful and very... Um, well, again, woozy. The link will be on your screen for exactly four seconds. <laughs> Click it now! Um, yeah, and I, I I was happy with the end result of it, but I just, it didn't, it started off as what I wanted to do and then sort but of then, spurred off into something different. But isn't that how these things kind of work, though? Like, with, with when you're making something creative, you sort of take inspiration from stuff and you think, you might watch House, for example, and think, oh, I want to make something that looks like House, but then the combination of everything else you put into it makes it into that unique thing that you make. Yeah. No, I get like, it. Like, you don't want to just copy your no. influences. Like, you want to build on Stuart it Lee, and develop it. of all people, had a great quote about um, Monty Python where he said that people who are influenced by Monty Python shouldn't be trying to copy Python. They should be trying to do their own thing. Mm-hmm. And, and take inspiration from the fact that of how unique and different it was and think, I can do something unique and different too. Yeah, it should be a starting so point. I guess, what be... I'm, I guess what I'm trying to say is, you know, if you make something and you, you're influenced by something, it doesn't have to look exactly like the thing that you are influenced by because then that would just be a copy. Mm. It, but if you take you just take an element of that and then mix it in with all the other stuff that you watched or absorbed to, to create that thing, then... You know, it's sort of. I think you get what I'm saying. Yeah, you can use your influences as a as a base, but it it mustn't be the predominant. No, feature. because then it's just a. Because then you're just making a, a poundland you version just of make, what you've got. Because then I don't think. Yeah, you just want to make the same thing. This would be a. Brilliant. I was trying to, as as was alluded to on a previous recording we made. Um, I was trying to write a book recently, and I realised that the ending is ex almost exactly like the ending of my one of my favourite novels, Illuminatus. Mm. And I, I, re I only realised after the fact, and I thought, oh, for fuck's sake, <laughs> I'm going to have to start this again. Well, I mean, it was a really horrible feeling. You know, I have <laughs> this this exact question with my partner. Yeah. Because she really wants to write a novel at some point. One of her big bucket list things is she wants to write a novel. And I always say to her, well, why don't you just start now? And she goes, well, no, because it's not as easy as just starting now. And I said, well, what you do is you write until you get an idea that spits right with you that you feel you can expand upon. Yeah. And then you develop that on. And it might be the case that you spend months writing a novel that ultimately never ends because there is no ending. Or there's no ending that's satisfying to you. Yeah. But even if you develop an idea to a point the idea offshoots from that idea might then spawn the idea that you ultimately stay on. Totes. But then she tells me to shut up and drink my blue drink, so... This would be a great double feature with Suspiria. It's very, um... <laughs> it's very, very on the nose, a lot of the stuff in this film. Mm. Looks very nice, though. Do the words subtle and how often come in the same sentence. Absolutely. 
This film is minimalism in action. <laughs> it's all subtext, Ben. <laughs> if you look at it hard enough, the film looks into you. And then where will you be? Oh, I can't wait to meet him either. Her name is Kung Fu. <laughs> is that a translation thing, or is that... That's literally her name. Oh. Yeah, they do that thing where each character is very distinctly... A, it's odd, the way, they pa it's the way they pan across. is very unusual and sickly. It's good, though. I like it, because mm. I think it, it saves a lot of time where... Emotional shots, tracking shots, panning shots might be a bit yeah. overkill. With this, it's literally just you're having a conversation and it's boom, 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 mm -hmm. boom. Tinto brass shot there. I can't remember where I first heard of this film. I. <laughs> I seem to think that it was cracked that I first heard about this film. The, the website cracked? The website cracked, and it was in the late 2000s. And there was an article that... Was it a list? Was it like six craziest... Must have been crazy something. Japanese films. Number four will shock you. Something like that. It must have been one of those clickbaity type of sixteen films that that are so damn weird. It's that are crazy. So, that are so damn crazy. That are so goddamn destructive. That are so damn kooky. Yeah. Where did they get their crazy ideas from? Where were these filmmakers doing the acid? Were they doing the LSD? Did they do a drugs? Did they? Were they all? DMTing their heads off? They were high the on... The answer is yes. They were whacked off on goofballs. They were doing ecstasy pipes. They were chewing the chimneys. <laughs> they were full spunky backpack. But um, I think it was cracked where I heard it first. It must have been about 2008, <sighs> 2009. It was one of those moments where I read the plot, went over to Amazon, saw that it was not a million pounds, and then bought it. There and then. Didn't even hesitate, didn't look up reviews, didn't do anything. Read the basic plot, saw a clip of a cat spewing vomit, <laughs> bloody vomit, and bought it without question. And I've only ever had one other film that's do done that. Do you look that. in this film? There's his cat. <laughs> that baby's going to fly away. I love the transitions in this film. I love the way it does that sort of thing where it, like, it freezes and then fades. Hmm. You know what I mean? It just kind of... It's like the whole film just flows. It's got this lovely dreamlike thing to it. I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say this film's naturalistic it's in any way, shape or form. This is how I but... see life, <laughs> This is how I see life. Naturalism might be the most least descriptive thing to say about this this film. Well, I'll tell you what. How about if we ever make a film, we just nick the editing style clean off this? Oh, yeah. Definitely. What I was saying before about inf don't copy influences, just never mind that for now. We'll just do this. But Terence Dix, the late great Terence Dix. Oh yeah, he's dead now. He's unfortunately gone. Has my favourite quote of all time, and I, I've said it so many times on my YouTube channel, and I think I've said it to you at least two dozen times. My favourite. <laughs> it quote... was. I got pissed all the time. <laughs> My favorite, one of my favorite quotes. <laughs> was that the quote? <laughs> no, one of my favorite. I am a drunk man. No, no, no. no. Gobble, 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 do. I just want to see that on a quote. <laughs> I am a drunk man, Terence Dix. Yes. Um, no, Terence Dix once famously said that you can have an original idea, but it needn't be your original idea. You've not, you need to say it in his voice. Well, you see, the thing is about writing about the Zygons is you can have an original idea but it need not be your original idea. <laughs> the late great Terence Dix there. Who will be hearing from his solicitor very soon. <laughs> um, hey, you can't uh, slander the dead. True. That's sad. <laughs> pity, bad, pity, I wish you could slander the dead. Yeah. It'd be fun. I'd get my vengeance. Um, 
I also just remembered that the the score for this film uses the same motif all the way through. Yes, <laughs> more or less. Just in slightly slowed down or different genre eyes yeah. bits. It's the same composition effectively. I love the way the film is lit. It's very nice. After watching this film, I... No, that was where I was. So, Cracked, I think, was where I first heard about it. And then James Rolfe covered it as part of one of his um, Cinemasca's Monster Madness oh, yes. series in uni. And I had a little fanboy moment where I did a little squee because I, I was a massive fan of Monster Madness. Yeah. That's one of the reasons mainly why I started doing this YouTube stuff myself was because there's so many films that he didn't cover because he decided to stop doing them last year. Yeah. Just called them all off. Um, that I thought I could probably do a couple myself. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's gone full goodies. That was a bit... See what I mean about that little transition then with the clock? Yeah. I really like this film. And I love those really odd-looking, unnatural na- map paintings Yeah, in the background. It's brilliant. It's almost like they've sort of come to life from a manga. Yeah. Um, but when he did that review of that, I did a little squee and it made me dig out the copy again. And since then, I've not heard a lot of people talk about this film particularly, um, and which I'm very surprised about because you'd think that the weird sort of culty film people would be all over yeah. this shit. Yeah, this I think would definitely make a fantastic double feature with Suspiria. I take it you've seen Suspiria before. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. They're not the new one, the old one. Yeah, the old yeah, one. Yeah, I watched yeah. it in, in uni. Yeah. I wasn't I invited. Because I watched it in my first year when I lived in the halls. Why wasn't I, I invited? We were doing karaoke back I, then. I got it from the library. That was one of the great things I loved about actually. Well, not just living in the halls, because I did it in, when we lived in the house too, but. Um, just like going to the library. I think I went nearly every week at one point and would just look for the most obscure, weirdest stuff I could find. And uh, Did they have any Bergman in there? Didn't you? Yeah, they had loads. Loads of stuff like that. I'm, I'm always sorry, grateful man. because the, the 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 library at uni actually had a load of like radio stuff that I would just used to nick for free. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, well, it was a library. It was the uni library. You didn't have to pay. Oh, well, that's true. So I listened to the League of Gentlemen's radio show. I listened to Little Britain's radio show. I that's listened nice. to... It was the first time I managed to listen to Why Bother? Which was the, um, for those of you who don't know, was a collaboration between Chris Morris and Peter Cook. Yes. Which is always always worth listening. You'll probably find it online, but I found a CD copy, which I was able to, which I was really grateful for. My uncle's and, got uh, a CD copy of his house. So yeah. I've listened to it once or twice before. It's only like they're only five episodes of like ten minutes each, so mm. it doesn't take you long to watch them, but listen to them even. The feeding the cat a hamburger. Don't feed the cat after midnight. Turn into a gremlinoid. House 2, the new batch. What surprised me most is that I don't think this was a manga to begin with. Why does that surprise you? Well, you'd think it would have maybe... Oz. Yeah, well, this is what I'm saying. You'd think that maybe it started as a book, and then, like a comic, and then the creator sort of looked at the comics and decided to just adapt it in no, that style. This, this is Hope just... you haven't got any seizures, by the way. No, this is, this is just a style, isn't it? It's a very unique style, though. I can't Absolutely, think it's 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 pure cinema, as Hitchcock would say. It's something that you could only do in film. Mm. You couldn't really get away with it in any other medium. Oh, absolutely. This Blu-ray's scrubbed up really nice, though. Yeah, the DVD version's a little bit lackluster in comparison. I I love all this like little flashbacks done in the style of like. <laughs> Do you find that funny as well? Like their dialogue, it's like they're watching. Yeah. Like she's telling a story, but they're acting as if they're watching a the film. story happening. And one of the things that I did particularly like about this is um, things that are of importance go from grayscale to color. Yeah. And then fade back out again, as if it's sort of 
been made prominent that this is a thing you need to be looking at. Yeah. I also quite like how they've changed the cinematic style based on the year. Yeah. So, like, um, it's going from black and white to a more sort of um, monochrome vibe. Like, I'm saying she looks so pretty. It's like they're watching it. Yeah. It's really... It's a very, like I say, just woozy film. Woozy, yeah, that's a good word for it. You're not really... You can't really get settled, can you? No. You're not sure what the fuck's going to prop up next. You've got to... you sort of constantly on... I mean, like that, for example. That's great. That's matte painting sort of taken to a... Yeah. You know, I mean, considering that the Green Death, for example, used a very similar setup, but on a much, much smaller scale, this is You can't like... you can compare the production values of the Green Death to this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Even though this was made not long after, but <laughs> they, had inf- they obviously had infinitely more... Well, I like to think... That... Money to throw around. I like to think that the Green Death was the sole <laughs> influence of this film. Had the Green Death not been made, this film would not exist. Such is life. Kiss, kiss, see, kiss, They've already been introduced to these these lot, but they have a little roll call. Hmm. Like we're just meeting them. That's quite interesting. What I particularly like about this film is that for the first half an hour, forty five minutes. You have no idea what you're letting yourself in for. <laughs> this is so far just a really quite nice story of some girls going on an adventure in the woods. Yeah. And if you didn't know what the second half of the film was about. <laughs> what a strange landscape. You can sort of see the join there, can't you? Mm. Where the map painting starts. Did you notice it? Yeah, just a little bit, just on the edges. <laughs> oh, great, here comes baby Huey. Uh-oh, boss fight number one. Do, 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 do. You're the niece of the lady of the mansion. What? Well, that's what she is. It's a little bit... Um, you're the king of the castle of the trees of the house. Of the... <laughs> I wonder whether these girls were fully aware of what film they were making. Um, yeah, I don't think so. Because they have these things in films done called scripts. What, what I mean is and like... they read them and they see what happens in the film. What I mean though is like, if they read the line, girl gets eaten by a piano. <laughs> Do you think they literally meant... I, I, I like to think that they had a bit of a laugh about it. You could draw a lot of comparisons plot-wise of Evil Dead, couldn't you? Yes. People go in a house. I'm not sure you know whether Evil Dead came before this or not. Um, what year was this? I, my heart wants to say 76. Hang on, pass, pass me, I will find it. Right, there you go. Okay. I think it was either 76 or 77, but I might be well off with that, so... 77? So Evil Dead was after this. Evil Dead came out. Evil Dead came out in seventeen nine. And what do you reckon the odds are of Raimi having procured a copy of House? I don't know. I, Raimi might have seen this, but would 
did this like get much western distribution um it's, was it seen a lot outside of japan it had a relatively reasonable run in japan and then it was locked the fuck down for about 20 years <laughs> is that the official term yeah oh. <laughs> On the vault where this print was stored, it just said, locked the fuck down, go away. Because <laughs> I remember they made a big song and dance about this film coming back out because it hadn't been released on, outside of um, Japanese VHS tape, it hadn't been released on any other format. Yeah. What do you think happened to him? Got what certificate this film is? With well, the box that you literally just looked at, look yeah. at it again. <laughs> it involves moving. I don't like moving. Oh, it's got a tiny certificate on the box. Unrated. This is a fifteen. Yes, um, that sounds about right. Contains fifteen. Mild... Contains moderate bloody horror and fret. This should be a twelve, really, shouldn't it? You could argue that. The threat, which I always find really find really funny on back of DVD boxes, when they say this film contains threat, yeah, it's like uh, most. I think most basic stories have to have some threat. I can't think of a film that doesn't have threat <laughs> at some degree. Isn't that what drives like tension in stories? Usually, narratives tend to be. Uh... Ooh. Oh, here we go. Oh, Jesus. We're now we're now into nonsense the nonsense part of the film. Hooray! I like the stop motion lizard. I hope you like that little cue, the one that goes the one that went doo because you'll hear that exactly two hundred and eighty four times. No, come on, Ben, that's exaggerating a bit. Five hundred and eighty times minimum. <laughs> At least. At minimum. No more, no less. You're a strange cat eating a lizard. That's a rather creepy smile. I, I'm, I'm struggling to remember the, the, the plot exactly. Does the auntie... Um, does, she, <laughs> does she know about the house? I mean, the, the thing to bear in mind, Ben, with um, this film is that the plot is predominantly irrelevant. And from the moment they walked through the door, you might as well assume that they're dead. <laughs> um... It's just right now I'm I'm watching this as a visual piece. <laughs> and it's a very distinct visual piece. It's very interesting. It's a skeleton. Not a skeleton. <laughs> Never doing weird stuff with a frame rate. I would be interested to see how this film looked on its VHS release. I'm sure you'll come across it in your travels at some point. Mm. I imagine some of the effects work a little bit better. But then I suppose one of the main selling points of this is the unnaturalistic vibe, so you don't want it to smooth out to the point where it looks normal. You're saying it would look normal on VHS? I think it would smooth out a lot of the the weirder more unnatural looking elements. Everything looks a bit plastic. Yeah, but it's meant to. 
Well, that's what I'm saying, and I think the VHS version of this maybe would make it look a bit more real. Yeah. Which would kind of subtract from it a bit. But then I think some of the more horror-driven elements would look fantastic. So I suppose it's horses for courses kind of scenario. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that um, a lot of Japanese schoolgirls wouldn't say, let's get cracking. <laughs> they don't, yeah, that's not necessarily an English idiom. I've heard other people say it. To be honest, outside of Cockneys and the north of England, I've never heard an American say, let's get cracking. I have. Have you? Yeah, let's get cracking. <laughs> Somebody threw that cat. <laughs> Had the animal safety, the same animal safety officers who worked on Italian Mondo films at the time. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was actually the, the policy animal... of. Um, oh, you like to throw the cat? Yeah. yeah, that's fine. It was actually the animal wrangler from *Cannibal I, Holocaust*. I actually hate animals. It's something the animal handle might have been saying. I hate them. They always attack me. I don't know I, why. Throw I the like cat it when they die. Slowly. Especially turtles. Yes. Seriously, fuck turtles. How many of them are there left? <laughs> really, that few. Four. Fantastic. Brilliant. Ace. My work here is done. Only three more to go. <laughs> I'm keeping one. See, she likes food, so she stole a watermelon, <laughs> and now she hasn't got anywhere to put it. Are you celebrating racial harmony again mm. with your delicious buttons? I'm always ce celebrating it. I'm helping the world, Dan. What do you do? Uh, I watch strange movies about <laughs> kung fu teenagers. Oh, there's a rat in a dress. Didn't spot that in the DVD version. They say, oh, look, a rat. Yeah. <laughs> How did you not spot it? Didn't see it. <laughs> Didn't see it, mate. No, it's not. Stomach. It's an abbreviation. Yeah. But I've never said me Mac's hungry. But it makes sense. <laughs> Mac. Stomach. <laughs> it makes a kind of sense. Makes a kind of sense. How did that cat get up there? <laughs> it's a cat. They get. Trust me. They get every fucking last. Just threw it up there. <laughs> That's a point, actually. Off to when they say off to the loo. Would they call it a loo? No. <laughs> Pretty sure they wouldn't anyway. The subtitles of this film were translated by a Cockney cab driver. Yeah. Funnily enough. Or someone from Yorkshire. <laughs> I'm just off to the loo. I'll really um Oh, that makes sense. You never noticed that? No, I just thought it was more weird editing. <laughs> no, it's because she's doing, doing that and she's it's doing it right, nice. isn't it? Wow. A scene that was later um, ripped off in the film Wayne's World. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, that art house classic. <laughs> oh, no, the one who likes to eat hasn't come back. Where could she be? Big Mac, where are you? 
Big Mac. You see, that was where I was thinking that was going to come from. They call it Big Mac? Yeah. Yeah, that was a good word. Better than Stomac. Ooh, that's making me feel sick. Jaw shot. And reveal. <laughs> and now the nonsense part of the film begins. Hooray! <laughs> the fuck? Brilliant. Brilliant, I'm on board with this. <laughs> I think you have to be in a specific mindset for this kind of a film, but if you are, it's a real treat. I think I've twigged what kind of style some of this is. So some of it, like, is is the director's own unique style, but some of these scenes where the dialogue's taking place are very heavily influenced by Japanese adverts. Japanese adverts. Yeah, I like watching adverts. I don't. I don't. I haven't seen a lot of Japanese adverts. So you'd have to educate me there. It's all very soft, very um, warm, and very kind of up close shots of people's faces talking about the product yeah um the only difference is instead of it being the product here it's a severed head um or a cat vomiting blood or a piano eating somebody um i'm not saying that it's solely okay. influenced by it, but it it's certainly got a a vibe that's reminiscent of japanese what if the bit in mario 64 where the piano comes to life and grows teeth was inspired by this film there's only one way to find out. Because that's exactly what happens I'm in this I'm going to take a look at this and yeah. see what's going on. I'll get onto Google and see <laughs> what's going on. There's no direct links that I can find, so if you want to claim that as your own thing and say it's yours, trademark... I just think it's quite funny how a similar Japanese product 20 years later also features a scene of a piano growing teeth and coming to life. Well, you heard it here here first, folks. Ben's cracked a 20-year-old case that has nobody else... Well done, Sherlock. ...tied to it. Another case sold. Back to the back cave. <laughs> She's the brainy one because she wears glasses. She's called Prof, isn't she? Mm. We already told you she had her head cut off and she bit me on the bum. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Delightful. I would really like to pet that kitty. <laughs> what are you going to say? Like you'd like to hit it then or something? No, I like cats. I don't cats know why I thought. Favorite. I don't know why I thought you were going to say it's that. Because you've grown up on a diet of nineteen seventies Mondo Italian mm, films, well. and you believe in it. You were friends with the bloke who did the animal handling on this film, weren't you? Yeah, his name was his name was Timothy. Yeah. Nice man. They couldn't understand. He couldn't speak a word of Japanese, and they couldn't speak English, so he would tell them to like 
hurt, hit the cat or attack it and they misheard that as pet it and stroke it so mm. the cat was actually meant to be beaten he got but, very very upset by that uh, remembering Very, very, and I've said it about eight times now. A very woozy film. All things just very strange, strange, but in a good way. Do you reckon that this maybe inspired Chris Morris's Jam? No. <laughs> what it's about not... the radio series Blue Jam? This no, this feels more like it does remind me of something. I can't think of it right now. Hmm. Is that is that your get the dads in scene? You better believe it is. <laughs> Tasteful though. Yeah. No boobies on show here. Well, they don't like nudity in Japan, do they? No, they're quite averse to it. Yeah. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> and, and we've gone into crazy world it's again. the fact that it happens so quickly yeah <laughs> it's just like boom done how we <laughs> <laughs> just my imagination uh, alright whatever <laughs> Let's keep she on. literally had wood flying at her and she just went bit weird that wasn't it <laughs> Must have dreamt it. That was mad, wasn't it, ladies? Anyway, off to the loo. <laughs> off to the loo for a crap. Let's get cracking. She was in a wheelchair. But she said that the kids gave her energy. Energy to not be paraplegic anymore? Energy to feed on their souls. Oh, so this is a story of witches. Yeah. Well, she is a witch, isn't she? I don't know. <laughs> you don't know. This is a You've bit... seen this more than me. I know, and that's the weirdest, that's the worst part of this film. Is I've... She climbed into the fridge. <laughs> um, I've watched this film probably half a dozen times, and every time I... Every time I do watch it, I always find something new, and I always understand the film maybe a little bit more. But it's still very weird, and I still don't entirely fully remember. <laughs> yeah, just eat your hand and noodles. <laughs> <laughs> I love this film. They went on the keyboard and turned it to that cat noise that everyone played with in high school. It could have been worse. It could have been the cat noise from Mario Paint. <laughs> Oh, 
fucking late. There's there's no real lead up to the weirdness, is there? It just kind of starts. It just happens, and then what? The film starts, and then it's weird. The film starts. It goes weird, and then it ends, and then it stops, and then it starts again, and then it stops. And it's, I think it's the. Abrupt... I can't remember if this film ends or just stops. Yeah, I, I believe that this film just stops. Yeah. But um, I think that's what probably makes the film the most unusual is the fact that the weirdness just starts and stops like a tap. It's yeah. not like it dribbles a bit of weirdness and then suddenly, you know... It goes full tilt, full it, tilt buggy. It's on, off. That's it. You know, there's a weird bit and then it stops. And there's a weird bit and it stops. And there's no yeah. build-up or anything. I mean, I suppose you could argue that the build-up is the weird bits get even weirder. Yeah, the pacing of this film is so bizarre. Mm. I mean, even something like as plain as this, you're left asking, well, <laughs> what's the context? Where does this fit in? It's, How is it? It's a sad story about a daddy. Or whoever. But is this a flashback? And if it is a flashback, how come it's not in black and white like the other flashbacks? It's not a flashback. This is in the house, isn't it? I don't know. I don't, you tell me. I'm as confused as you are. Okay, all teenagers want to play the Black Parade theme, okay. Oh, they want to play that same fucking chord sequence that appears for this whole film. Yeah. It wouldn't be a horror film about someone. Just playing the piano at one point in a spooky house. A true. A true. You'd be surprised how often that happens. I'm trying to think of the staple slashes where this happens. <laughs> <laughs> it's not exactly in the sort of Silent Hill vein of subtle nastiness is it no this is psychedelic <laughs> just... craziness and yeah. i really like it it's so easy to just be grim it takes genuine talent to be surreally abstractly unsettling Oh, great. She's accidentally turned the telly on. <laughs> but it's one of those modern vertical televisions for people who film with their phones the wrong way around. What's the trick with horror films? Don't look in the mirror ever. Because you can die. Um. All right. <laughs> All right. I often love in like when the craziness happens, the calm music plays under it. Yeah, it just keeps rolling. Oh no, her face has fallen off. Oh, I hate it when that happens. A bit warm in here. Turn it down a bit. She's been to she she's had ready break for her breakfast. She's 
she's not noticed the spooky, spooky skeletons in the background. Nope. I would have been more concerned with the fact that the metronome started on itself. <laughs> Those like the skeletons you get in ghost trains that just kind of wobble about a bit. Don't they really do much? <laughs> yeah. Never been on a ghost train. You've never been on a ghost train? Never been on a ghost train. Oh dear. You've never been to Blackpool? Yeah, but I'm not really a ride person. Well, I'm concerned in regards to the rave piano. They're ah, just... It's, it's all fine. It's part of the new LED installation they've got going. Yeah. Oh dear. <laughs> Do I have the Kung Fu ones ready? This is weird. Is the mattress just beating her? Yes. Would being beaten to death by a mattress be painful or...? Yeah. Um... Because steel's heavier than feathers. I'm not rightly sure what I'm looking at there. <laughs> Let's just abruptly just cut away from that. <laughs> Meanwhile, in a different part of... <laughs> I hate, like, horror movie protagonists who just don't believe anything, even after, like... <laughs> a giant! A giant! monster emerged from the piano and beat me with mattresses. You saw it happen. You literally were in the room watching it. Nah, mate. Oh, you and your crazy fantasies. Crazy, crazy person. I always wanted to do, like... It's probably already been done, but I always wanted to do, like, a some, like a, a sketch like that. Where, like, someone is, was just, just watching, like, a ghost, like, stab someone. <laughs> and they're just like, My dear girl, you're imagining things. All illusion. It's just a trick of the light. All fantasy in the mind <laughs> of like, adolescence. No, my legs are being hacked off by the wolf man. Pure my dear girl, you and your delusions. Fantasy. <laughs> Will you ever learn? Come to bed at once. <laughs> <laughs> a vampire's nomming away at her neck. <laughs> he's, he's watching it happen. No, don't believe it. What do you mean you don't believe it? It's happening in front of... Nope. Not happening. Bye. You and your superstitions. <laughs> anyway, I'm off to the local Satanist church. I'll see you all later. <laughs> Rule 35, never walk to a summoning hand. What's rules 1 to 34? Um, don't... Never eat shredded wheat. <laughs> Cereal on the brain today, haven't you? I like cereal. Good for you. It's good for you. Ben, if you go missing tonight, am I to look for your pants? You have to go around going, going. It's all nonsense. It's just, a, it's just a bit of light bouncing off the wall. It doesn't exist. Ben never existed. <laughs> ben never existed. Don't be dilly. Don't be dilly. Don't be silly, my dear. Comedy dining what? Experience what? No, it was my show. I did it all myself. Every episode it was just me talking to myself. For three hours sometimes. Forever. And ever. Forever. And ever. Forever. And ever. Slow pan out and of Dan's house. And ever. And ever.
slow fade to black. Roll credits in silence. <laughs> <laughs> this film must have cost a bomb. I don't know how much do um, giant mechanical pianos cost, and large map paintings, <laughs> and entire scenes where a man in finery riding on a white horse rests. Well, horses aren't cheap. No, yeah, if you've got horse I money, know, I mean, I used to work at the glue factory, and let me tell you. <laughs> Although I used to wrangle them for free, of course. Well, of course. You used to just steal them from S- old Farmer Johnson. Stealing horses is. Uh... Oh, do you remember those nights, Dan, when we used to like go to his farm and we'd hear, "Hey, you, you crazy kids! What the hell are you doing on my my fifth horse this week? We're stealing horses, Farmer. Go back <laughs> this to is the... my life. Uh, just... You can't do this to me. <laughs> oh, crazy. Why are you doing this? Crazy farm, and we tip him. <laughs> for fun we just tip him over yeah we just go up to him and just push him on the ground <laughs> but not hard we'd... and just and laugh while doing so no, we'll, we'll, we'd, we'd mm. lock arms if you remember rightly we'd lock arms with him and yeah. we'd just start rocking back and forth and then we start singing to him yeah. off key yeah, yeah yeah in his ears yeah you'd sing in a sharp and I'd sing in a flat <laughs> 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 he was so confused. <laughs> and we'd go, and, and we just say, we just start chanting in his heads like, this is a nightmare. Yeah. This is a nightmare. You are in hell, over and over. And then he'd, fu- he'd fall to the floor because we'd disorient him so much. Yeah. And then we'd start singing an off-key version of Rock and Roll by the Glitter yeah. Band. He had to see that shrink for a while. Well, that meant we just could get more horses, you know. Yeah. He, he was distracted, so we, that just meant we just could spend... All afternoons, rounding up his horses. And I mean all afternoon. They were all rounded up. Every single one of them. None were spared. That crazy old man Johnson. Uh, He's so happened? mad, wasn't he? Whatever happened to him? Uh, he, he can only eat from a straw now, I believe. Uh, the film's frame rate has gone a bit laggy again. PS4 graphics were just not meant to process this kind of film. <laughs> From the makers of LSD Dream Emulator. Just had a text off that friend of mine who has a driver's license. Now. Old Man Johnson. Uh, yes. How's he doing? <laughs> I don't know, but he just sent me a text. He of... just sent me a text of a, it's just a picture of him crying. Well, the text he's just sent me just, just very very unusual. I mean, um, he sent me a voice message that says, Hey, you crazy kids! Oh, I get it now. Okay. He sent me a text that said, I hate Nigel. What are with you no doing? context, because I don't know anybody called Nigel. Well, we're all making plans for him. Ah, was that XTC? What yes, was XTC? You, 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 win the, you win the video. Hooray! But then I realised he was talking about Nigel from Maidstone from Ian Lee's radio show. What are those crazy kids doing now? It's all right, Farmer Johnson. We're going to tip what you if, over again. What if you dubbed all the giggly Japanese girl schoolgirl voices of just an old man? That would be quite entertaining. We're trapped. I need to go to the loo. <laughs> and suddenly it's a horror film. As in, like, it's like the film decided it was going to be a horror film now. Okay, I'm horror now. <laughs> exactly, yeah. If the film was a person. I go spooky now. Everyone's going to be slow and weird. You're going to be spooky now. You're bad. You want to be spooky with me? Maybe they just ran out of money to like print at the right shutter speed. Well, no, what happened was the electricity got cut and it was a choice of either being able to see the film or being able to run it at a reasonable frame rate. <laughs> I didn't realise that some cameras charge by the frame rate. Yeah, well, that's how it works. One frame is 99p. If you, so if you run a film at 24 frames a second... You're running up quite a bill. That's like, what, 24 quid a minute? 24 quid a minute. 24 quid a second, even. Oh, yeah, 24 quid per set for a second worth of frames. So, Christ. Um, that's why they always ran at 12 but frames a second. Luckily, we were all right, weren't we, Dan? Because, I mean, a lot of the money for our stuff was just got from Old Man Johnson. Well, I yes. Whether he liked it or not. Well, this was the thing. He had no choice. We, we took his life savings to fill out our frame rate, but we also did draw a few in ourselves. Yeah. And now suddenly we're in the middle of a traffic jam. 
Even though the films had really nothing to do with transport, apart from the bit at the beginning with the train? No, because that's the guy from earlier. He fell down the stairs. Oh, yeah. The one with the bucket. It's scary! It's just like a horror film! That's out of date! Move Whoa. away! Oh, Whoa! It's a karate, it's a karate film. film! Oh, she's gonna do karate. There we go. Give it a rest! It's no use! Why? Why? They have a planned a sequel. There must be some kind of device! Device? Well, oh. Auntie lives here by herself, right? So there must be a way of closing the doors on her. <laughs> and just like that, it becomes a creepy The film fantasy. is dedicated to his memory. This film is dedicated to the millions of fans who love Bruce Lee. <laughs> That's stupid. <laughs> we don't know how to open the door. Well, Auntie's really clever and has probably got an automatic shutter on the door. And Auntie would know how those doors work. I've got a great idea. Let's ask Auntie. No, because Auntie's evil, remember? Yeah, so she ain't gonna help. So many cats. What if it just turned out to all be a dream? Just a crazy fever yeah, dream. Just, in but the mind it's of only old in the, like, the last, Johnson. Only in the last two seconds of the film. So it's like, oh, it was all a dream. Cut to credits. I think it should be. <laughs> no, that's a two on the nose. I think they should go even more basic than that. I think they should have old Farmer Johnson wake up and just go, huh, dream. End. <laughs> he says it so aggressively. Dream. End. End. Not even end, just the word end written in... Um... Cut to me and you in the background setting fire to his horses. Yeah. And laughing. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I hate horses! <laughs> Not even the word end, just the word end written in kanji. <laughs> However, that may be I thought spelled. you were going to say the word end written in cans. Yes. Like cans of, like, coke Peas. sprayed on the, on the ground. Cans of babies. I think the direction that the director of photography received for this film was, I want I want the audience to feel like they're constantly going to throw up. I would like the audience to be in a constant state of unknowing and fear. Don't you dare keep that camera still. But I also want them to laugh. Can you create a sort of scared laughing? They take things in their stride, these girls. Mm. They just... <laughs> We're literally trapped in the house by some weird thing. Oh, well. Let's all gather around the, around the Joanna for a good old knees up. <laughs> Hang on, I got, I got the loo. Oh, not again. <laughs> Let's get cracking. I wonder if there's an English dub of this film. I hope Probably so. not. There's got to be someone out there. If not, we should do that. <laughs> Just between us, we do it in the style. Do all, and we do all the voices ourselves. All the voices ourselves, but we do it in the style of a traditionally English dubbed kung fu movie. <laughs> so everybody sounds a bit like this. Oh no! <laughs> you want to watch out for him? He's drunk. <laughs> <laughs> I've not seen many English dubs. Is that what they sound they like? They all sound ridiculous. They all basically sound like the cast watched a Carry On film before they dubbed the film they were talking and decided to just do those characters. <laughs> Most of them sound like Kenneth Williams, which is ridiculous for a very serious kung fu movie. Oh, here's the bit where she gets eaten by the piano. Oh, now she's worried. (laughs) 
I wonder how many takes they did of her flapping about in that thing. At uh, one. <laughs> That's all they could afford. Well, they did half a take, technically. One frame uh, One frame is a pound, Ben. <laughs> I wouldn't rate this a 15. It's too daft. It's, I'd give it a 12. Yeah. And I'd only give it a 12 for mild peril. <laughs> It's too daft to be considered a serious horror. And to be honest, any 12-year-old that wants to watch this film, I'm going to let them watch this film. If they've gone to the I'm trouble gonna show. Of... I'm going to show uh, every, all my kids this film. Yeah. If they've gone to the trouble of finding out what the film is and they know what it is, they should be allowed to watch it. Not really. I love how jarring the, the edits are. <laughs> we go from crazy crazy piano E.T. time to soft, sombre... Wedding. Wedding. Do you know what I mean? Sure. You know what this film is? Go on. It's that guy in a pub who you don't know what he's going to do. Yeah, it's Mad Dave, the uh, Mad Dave the movie. He's just sat there in the corner. What's Mad Dave gonna do? But don't say the wrong thing or look at it in the wrong way because he 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 seems all right and calm. He's having his like fifth pint of Guinness, mm. but you say us do the wrong thing, you bring up you know. If you say hello to him and he thinks it's in the wrong tone, it's on, <laughs> and shit's going down. You're getting stabbed. And not only are you getting stabbed, you'll probably be eaten by the hand dryer. <laughs> It'll come out of the pub toilet going. Doo -doo -doo -doo. You'll get kicked through the wall to that music. <laughs> oh, she's in the clock, and the clock is very slowly eating her. Yeah, so um, our 10,000 subscriber landmark will be that we fully redub this film with our voices. I'd quite like to do that. That Doing would be all fun. The characters. Yes. Yeah. Um, if we should do it, we should do it completely sincerely. Absolutely. As well, because thing is, right? If if we if we like if we comedy it up, it'll sound that way. But if we just do it like as if we are just trying to do a dub. It will probably sound a lot funnier and crapper than if we, you know, if we if we like comedy it up. You Absolutely. know what I mean? <laughs> so ten thousand subscribers, guys, make it happen. We get there, you'll get a full get dub of the film house. A full dub that the masters of, the of cinema might want to release one day. <laughs> <laughs> we are not joking. English dub, the full English dub. Recorded by two blokes with too much time on their hands. That means, Dan, you're going to have to transcribe this entire film. Done. In, like, a, a kind of rough script form. Yes. <laughs> I'll do that. Yeah. If these guys give me 10,000 subscribers, I will do that. And we will do that. And it'll be <laughs> all right. <laughs> Surely not. You're lying, liar. <laughs> what the hell is going on? <laughs> it's just a bear surfing noodles. Is there a bear serving noodles? Of course there's a bear serving noodles. Why wouldn't there be a bear serving noodles? It's so tasty I could weep. Why wouldn't there be a bear serving noodles? I don't know. Okay, why not? But I'm disappointed at the lack of... Do you have a problem with bear serving noodles? I find them egregious. <laughs> why can't bears be allowed to do people things too? 
because people can barely do people things. That's a good point. And people can't do bear things. I forgot about that. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh god, it's Science Patricia Quinn. Fiction. Quick, somebody Double summon Richard O'Brien. <laughs> This would have been the year after the Rocky Horror Picture Show, wouldn't it? It was the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Two years, two years. Oh, later. it was seventy four, wasn't it? Seventy five. Was it seventy five? Oh shit, yep. it was seventy five. Yeah. I've entered your your auntie's world. What what's the world, Dad? It's a nonsense world. She eats any young women, so she can wear her bridal gown. It's a nonsense world. What do you mean it's a nonsense world? It's just a world of nonsense. Well, look at it. Things Please. just kind of happen. This is reminding me very much of. Um, Mid nineties Fox Kids, Power Rangers esque, <laughs> big bad Beetleborg style fight sequences. Turns out Rita Repulsa is the big baddie behind it all. After ten thousand years, I'm finally free. <laughs> I'll get that trick, Kung Fu. Go go, Kung Fu Rangers. Yeah, if we do a dub of this, we'll have to do what all English, crappy English dubs do, which is when they put in loads of, like, movement noises. So when they're moving around, no, when they're moving around, just like, ah, yeah, ah, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, ah, yeah, ah, yeah, ah, yeah, ah, yeah, ah, yeah, ah, yeah, I haven't questioned it up till now, but where did her trousers go? That's because you're a man. It just never occurred to me. That's very evil dead, isn't it, with the wire? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she flew out of the house. Of course she did. They were having trouble getting through the door. Just reminds me of that bit in The Simpsons where Homer just walks through sliding doors. <laughs> Maybe you, had, you, you had your noodles, did you? Your bear noodles? Did you enjoy your bear noodles? Barely. Considering this, the Blu-ray release is uh, nearly 10 years old, I think it's quite a nice um, encode. It doesn't doesn't look 10 years old. Did they just forget to chroma key in the background in those blue screenshots? No, no. That's the full intention. <laughs> Artist's vision and all that. I wish there were more films that just utterly left me... Speechless? <laughs> yeah. There just doesn't seem to be that many. What is going on? I think I'll find that's the metaphor there. Oh, look, tits. Yeah. That's my comment about this scene. (laughs) 
It's like Terry Gilliam. <laughs> she managed to summon the... Right, so to clarify... What? <laughs> what? So to clarify... She figured out to stop the ghost, you just hit a painting once. And then the cat vomits blood. Uh, this is so weird. Jeez. So, um... Uh, so to clarify... She got sucked into the lamp and got broken into little bits, but then she, using her powers of concentration and kung fu, she was able to... <laughs> using her superpowers of kicking things? Yeah. She was able to pull her legs together and fire them out of the lamp. To <laughs> That's very evil, Dad. That is very evil, Dad. <laughs> to attack um, the cat poster, which was the source of everyone's power. But now the floor's opening up. It's the cat's blood. <laughs> How small was that cat? Uh, about the size of my mittens, I would say. <laughs> Can you imagine? The <laughs> Meanwhile, in a. <laughs> In a smoother film. Meanwhile, in Michael Jackson's Thriller. Meanwhile, in Bear Noodles Part 2, <laughs> Secret of the Ooze. I want to watch Bear Noodles Part 2. <laughs> I want to watch a spin-off where the bear and the sober chef just travel the world. <laughs> get into crimes. Well, they're the true heroes of the story. Can you imagine if the film just ended here? With this music? Yeah, just the credits ran now. Wow, those girls are screwed if that's who's coming to save them. <laughs> he's, he's stuck in gif. <laughs> Just cuts back to them. It's no good. He's stuck in gif form. <laughs> There's nothing we can do. Maybe James Bond will save us. <laughs> Bond would just seduce the cat. He'd be, he'd be like, pussy, pussy galore. We meet again. Yeah, evil witch cat. Oh, great. The jar's eating my hand again. Looks like you've got yourself in a bit of a bloody mess. That's why you shouldn't leave the door ajar. <laughs> Is there any reason she suddenly lost all her clothes in that last moment? Um, the dads. Ah, okay. Are the dads really looking at that, or...? Well, you need something to keep the dads happy during all this chaos. To be honest, I was just happy with the chaos. <laughs> I did forget about the extensive nudity at the end of the film. <coughs> That's some freaky-deaky polarisation going on. Mm. Oh, she's literally being disintegrated. Why are you? Um. <laughs> Women. I'm all right. <laughs> what am I like? I'm all right. I'm all right, lads. Hey, lads. I'm all right. Hey. Am I right? Four, hey. I'm, am I right? Am I? Am I right? Am, um, am I right? Are you? Am I right? Hey. <laughs> ben never made it home.
Oh, okay, so she possessed one of the girls. She possessed her niece, didn't she? Yeah. Again, just casual nudity. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> okay, the beat goes on. <laughs> well, she happens, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. This is like those Japanese commercials you're talking about. Yes. It's a good example. It's all very warm. There's a lot of close-ups on faces. And... The Japanese commercials often have houses covered in the vomiting blood of a cat. Some of them did. <laughs> Do you remember that advert we used to quote where it was a load of lads? It was a Japanese advert and there was a load of lads. Oh, I think so. And Remind they were all me. sat around the office. And then one of them turns to the other and we could never tell what they actually said. <laughs> because it was all in Japanese. But the gist of it was they would say something like, I don't want to work in an office anymore. Let's go to Vegas. I and all the lads so. and all the lads would go, Yeah and then a little less conversation by all I do remember like, that, yeah. Little <laughs> less conversation, a little and it'd be like a Benny Hill style quick montage of like three <laughs> shots. If the lad's running down some stairs, a plane taking off. Yeah. And then... You used to show me that in uni. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. Because, and... like, that became, like, a joke, didn't it? Because around that time, I think, for some reason, every single fucking advert, not just in Japan, but in Britain as well, was using that JXL remix of Little Less Conversation. Yeah. So it's just like, we used to do that all the time. It's like, hey, da hey Dan. Let's go to the pub. A little less conversation. conversation. A little more. Cut to us in like a barrel over Niagara Falls. Yeah. <laughs> How did we get here? <laughs> Three shots. A shot of me grabbing my keys. A shot of us running down the street. And then a shot of us in barrels in the middle of Niagara <laughs> exactly. Falls. Exactly. So, Dan, what's the moral of the story? Um, witches are evil. Um, always pay your frame rate bills. Don't don't go in any houses ever. Never buy noodles from a bear. <laughs> um, no, always, always buy noodles from a bear because I I believe that that bloke is one of the few characters in this film who comes out alive. Ah, yeah. Well, actually, I don't know. We don't actually don't think we actually no, hear he from did, him again, do we? He just sort of disappears. He disappeared into Giftland. Um, if you are a watermelon salesman, don't become a skeleton. Um. Cats will vomit blood, but it's okay if you're your aunt. If you're your aunt. Okay. While the ELO blasts away in the background. <laughs> oh yeah, Jeff Lynn had a lot of involvement in this film. Um, Jeff Lynn was, was very involved in the writing of this film. Oh yeah. Sun is shining in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> Which is this film ending with that over the credits? That actually worked really well in a weird way. Can you imagine if you did that little less conversation advert but with this film? <laughs> it would actually probably make more sense. Hey girls, do you want to go to my auntie's house? Little less conversation. <laughs> little... <laughs> Things on fire. <laughs> Lightning flashing around, multicolored light, <laughs> boobies. <laughs> You know, we were laughing before at the subtitles saying Lou and like cracking and yeah. stuff like that. <laughs> this is like, oh, your boobies are out. <laughs> <laughs> These ending scenes are very ponderous. <laughs> yeah, I don't know really why this extra scene is on, to be honest. Um. 
Regen. <laughs> I'm sorry, I had a really odd vision then. Yeah. You know that, that shot where they're sat facing each other? Yeah. For some reason, Dan, maybe this is just because of the booze or the late hour, I pictured them getting out a pair of conkers. <laughs> Remember conkers? In Japanese, they just say, all right, you're crack. Just like getting out a pair of like, conkers on strings and just, just doing like... All right, yeah. Hey, I broke your conker. Yeah. Cool. I'm still not entirely um Did you ever play the game LSD Dream Emulator? I've seen somebody play it. I haven't played it myself. I played it. It's a very strange game from what I've seen. Obviously. It's great. <laughs> it's weirdly not there's as no, strange as this no, film. There's no plot or graphics or things to do. You just kind of wander just around. Just kind of wander around. And then at the end, it sort of it's gives like, you a grade on your ability to like, want your ability to wander around. Yeah, it's my kind of game. Yeah. It's nothing like this film. No. I, um, personally, I'm thinking the film should have ended at the black screen. When you say the black screen, you mean the black screen that started the film? Yeah. <laughs> it started and then it ended. <laughs> I am liking Well, that was the film. I like these. You have been watching type credits. You have been watching. No, you know, I, I think more films should do that. Yeah. Like, have, like, the actors at the end. Do you remember Predator? Yeah. Remember the Predator ends with all the cast like smiling and mugging to the camera? <laughs> nice. After they've all been like horribly mutilated. Kind of like this in a way. Yeah. After they've all been horribly mutilated and killed. I like. And it just cuts like starring Jesse Ventura. And he's like, ha ha! Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. Oh, hello. All the ladies are back in it again. <laughs> Is this the first draft of Live and Let Die? <laughs> so Live and Let... It, it does sound very similar, doesn't it? Mm. And your heart was an open book. You used to say, live and let live. The end. You know you did when you were inside the house. <laughs> oh, the song's in English. This is the this is the ELO, ELO I was talking about. Yes, I wonder if the song plays the full run. No, no, it doesn't. So yeah, that was. And you just and you just left kind of sat there. Yeah, just like what. <laughs> Not really, not really much to say. Really, I think I think the film speaks for itself. I, I, I have nothing to add to it. Um... <laughs> you know, that's like that thing that says friendly notice there. Yeah. Um, it's obviously it's to do with like copyright and copy protection. I thought like it was going to be like fr- friendly notice. The film you've just watched contained extreme violence, extremely disturbing sexual imagery, and extreme gore, and should not have been viewed by anyone. <laughs> I always like warnings that happen after the fact. Yeah. Warning may cause blindness. <laughs> what? <laughs> um Yeah, that was how <laughs> You know like you know like in some in some soaps they'll have a, like if they have like very like 
dark subject matter of the thing at the credits won't they if you've been affected by the issues in this program please call it i think this film should have something like that if you've been affected by the commentary that we have just recorded if, for you've, the movie House, if, if you've been affected by the extremely upsetting film you've just watched please call this number 0161 i don't give a fuck uh go fuck off at g at fuck you dot com if you've been affected by any of the imagery or discussions based in this, or if you were upset by our old man talk, please leave a comment below and let us know exactly why. We can't help you, but it's nice to know. Um, we should have watched it without... Sub- we missed a trick. We should have watched it without subtitles. Why is there an option to watch it without... Uh, okay. Because if you were Japanese... Yeah, I suppose so. All right. All right. But we, I mean... but, but we should have watched it without subtitles and then just guessed what they were talking about. It wouldn't have... <laughs> I don't think it would have made a difference because, like I say, the moment they walked into the house. What about like, the long, like, scenes where it was just like slow motion beauty shots with voiceover? What would you have done for that? Just, just enjoyed the visuals, to be honest. Yes. Should have ended with madness over the end credits. Madness. Uh, they call it madness. I was thinking more. Our house. Do, do, do. In, in the, the middle, middle of our street. street. Our house. It is a crazy fucking place. Do you our think a house. film like this could be made in the UK? Um, I don't think it could be made in anywhere except Japan. It's it's got that very distinctive, you know, style to it. So we're not going to see the US remake of House anytime soon. I don't. I, I oh god, if they they'd make a US remake and it if they just turn it into generic horror film with girls in house and there'd be loads of jump scares and there'd be loads of that noise, bomb every time that you know. There'd be loads of moments where somebody turns around and there's a thing directly in their face as soon as they yeah. turn around. Yeah, it wouldn't have any of the like charm and insanity and the woman being eaten by the piano would basically be a bloodbath and would probably be very disturbing. Yeah, it just wouldn't have any of the charm or wit or humour to it. Very be a bit bollocks, really. Yeah. So anyway, join us next week when we do The Wicker Man. No, we're not doing The Wicker Man. We are, we are doing The Wicker Man. We're not going to do the Nicolas Cage Wicker Man. What? You don't know. You don't own that film. Do you? I was drawn back. No, uh, I was in Poundland and um, they had a a copy and of you, a... And you thought, I have no dignity left. Fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> you guys don't want to hear about my Poundland ex. Was that your thought process we're, when you bought that film? We're, we're done here. You... Get the movies over. Go away.